kind of been saying all along. Um, hang on a second. Okay. So I used to do retail sales for a very long time. I used to actually manage a retail woman's coastal for 15 years. And one of the things um, that I had to do was I had to open my store. I was a store manager. So not only was I managing employees, I had to open the store. I had to turn on the lights. I had to go to the bank and do all these things. And what I call, I call these things, I call them mechanical. They're mechanical things because things that help you operate your business and things that you have to get done. So then what I do to incorporate that type of mindset, I incorporate it into any job that involves sales, rather be doing what I'm doing now with Lavelle as my main hustle or my side gig, my, my plan B for my other job. I have to have that same thought processes. Uh, meaning, okay, so if I'm going to go and do, uh, do Thrive and sell Thrive, I have to open my doors. I have to let my clients know that I am available. Now, some of you may be available 24 hours a day. That's up to you guys. Some of you may be open 12 hours a day. That's up to you guys. Me personally, I try to be available for pretty much until the time I wake up, which is about 6 a.m. until I close my eyes at 10. And even if I get up and someone sends me a message, um, I try to respond if possible, especially if it's a customer that's needing help with something. So that's that's kind of like the mechanical part of it about opening your store. What are you doing? Are you turning the lights on? Are you checking your back office to see what your volume is every single day so you know what you need for the rest of the month? You should be starting that on day one, January 1st to January 31st, every single day. There's also another thing that I used to do every single day. I used to go up to the cash register because at the back in the day, there was cash, physical fashion cash registers. And I'd have to put in my code, my every all my information and to get me on. And then I went to the bank. And when I looked at my numbers for that day, we kept the ledger of the previous year. So I knew what my sales volumes were for that previous year. We also even documented what type of weather there was or what if there was anything catastrophic that had gone on the years prior. So I, I knew one to forecast. I knew how, what my goal was to increase my sales volume based on what I did last year. Where do I need to go for this year? What my goal is for the end of the month? And I try to put all those figures together to create a plan every single day. There's also another thing that we used to do. This, um, it used to be called unit, UPT, units per transactions. And this is something that you guys, we can do with our job. Our plus line is our UPT. It means not only do we sell the three steps, but what else can we do to tell people that we have blast, that we have boost, that we have biotic, that we have different patches that may not work for somebody. It's creating that engagement with people and finding out what they need. Everybody's different. Everybody has different DNA. The customer in front of me at that time when I was working retail, maybe this mom who's got four kids and she's the one tugging on or the one tugging on that. She may be young. She may be tired. She may need this. You have to really take time to look at your client, your customer, and you have to measure up what you need for them. What, how can you solve their problem? How can you create um, not being too salesy, but also create just being there for them? kind of like as a friend, but also as an expertise person, a person who, who you're an expertise in what you do. So units per transaction. So if someone says to you, you know what? I love the step, the one, two, three steps. I love the, the vitamins that I take in the morning. I love the, the shakes and I like the patches, but then I get a little bit tired, like around three o'clock in the day or two o'clock in the day. What is going to be your UPT? What's going to be units per transaction? Units per transactions could be um, activate, it could be heat. Um, some people, you can even be creative and have them do their, their vitamin one in the morning, one in the afternoon, depending on the dynamic. And here, let me give an example of that. A lot of people don't realize. I had a customer who she worked from three to midnight, okay? She went, she drove, she was um, worked for the city and she drove, she was a supervisor, she drove a vehicle. And she also is a person who gets up early in the morning around seven o'clock. So I, in my mind, I think, okay, well, she's has long hours that she is awake and she needs to be going all day long. So I told her this was our solution. Do one capsule in the morning, do your shake in the morning and put on your patch. And here's another issue that I had with this particular customer. She had an issue with eating a lot of chocolate and having a really bad sweet tooth midday. 
So when I, when I, what I suggested to her before she went into her three o'clock job, cause that was right around the time that she would get her craving and she wouldn't eat some, anything healthy. She would go grab a box of chocolate. And, and she told me, she was, I would eat the whole box of chocolate. So what I said to her, I said, take that second vitamin and then take the uh, fudge brownie um, shake. So that helps her not being super hungry. It gave her some health and it gave her some of that chocolate feeling. And she absolutely loved it. You just have to listen to your clients and that's where you're going to grow on your UPT. That's also going to translate to dollars, which also is going to translate to more money that's going to be added to your cart at the end of the month when you're trying to reach your goals. So kind of think about that every day when you're talking to a client, talking to a customer, how can I increase their UPT units per transaction? And then the next thing I would do is I would look at my schedule. I would see who's, who's on my schedule today. Who's going to work for me today? Okay, I've got this person coming in from this time, this person coming in from that time. What, what payroll do I need to do? Um, where can I cut back? Where can I add? What's my industry? Is it Christmas time? Am I going to have a, need a lot of people there? Am I going to have a lot of promotions? Again, shifting mindset from that to what I'm doing in my, in my business now. I know that you know we had Christmas just came up. We had a lot of promotions that came up. We actually had quite a bit of promotions that we had to balance out how we're going to go and approach people with these promotions. What are we going to do? So that's really important to know and how to schedule your people. When is a good time to get in when someone needs help on training? They need you. They need their upline. They, how are you going to be able to be there for them? They want to run their own promotions. They're their own entrepreneur for their business. Are you going to be there to help guide them and help them with the promotions? Are you going to offer them credits? Just kind of having your hands in everything and also training them to go off on their own. So eventually the next year or the next promotion or the next Christmas, they're going to be strong enough to be able to leap on their own. So you then you create your own, what they what I call it, an assistant manager. And then the people underneath them, you can call them key holders. Whatever you want to use for your verbiage, that's kind of like how I equate myself. Um, but you have to know what to do with those people and schedule your plan out that day. And then you have to merchandise. Merchandising means, okay, this means this is kind of goes into marketing, okay? This means getting on the IPAs, getting on them at least three to five days a week or doing, well, now that we're only doing them two days a week, do them yourself. Be disciplined enough to do them yourself. And I will be honest with you, JoJo hit it, hit, hit it pretty hard uh, two weeks ago about people not voting on the IPA checklist. I do that. I took on that responsibility. I do it seven days a week and I get up about six to six thirty, and I put all that in there. I take the, my time out to do that. And I just hope you guys are utilizing that as a tool, not that you're, you're we're twisting your arm to do, but it's something that it's a tool that helps you guideline of what to get done. When you're checking off, it is showing your team, not only your upline and your downline, that you guys are putting in the time in that you're into your business. Now, we understand things come up. We understand you have a plan, you know, your, your planning job, if that's what you're calling it. We now understand the dynamics of children. We understand the dynamics of other things going on, doctor appointments. But that IPA checklist is on that, on our hustle and chat, on our hustle and grow for 24 hours until I put the new one in. So really, honestly, take the time out to do it. It only takes about a half hour to really honestly go through the entire thing and to get it done. So if you want to grow your business and all that and go off that checklist, and that checklist literally tells you how to market your business, adding the 10 people every single day to your Facebook, adding 10 people to your Instagram, adding people to whatever social media that you are using. If you're only feeding the people that are in front of you in your store, in your physical store, those are the people that are going to see when you are having a promotion, when you're having a life situation where you need this or that. You have to remember, let me just give you a story that was awesome. And I kind of shared this with some of you guys before. So I, <laughs> Sydney did a freaking badass live. And this is when we were doing lives. And I think we had to do them like every single day. And I was so pumped up to do my live. Okay. I was so geeked. And this was probably about two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And I, I get kind of like nervous. I'm fine. I'm nervous like beforehand, but I, I am, once I get on, I, I feel pretty good. So, um. So it's hilarious. So she does her live and I'm watching her live and I'm like, damn, how can I talk that freaking live? Cause she's so awesome. <laughs> Said you, you do some awesome lives and, and uh, just you too, for sure. And um, so I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, she kind of like did the one thing that I kind of wanted to do. So I'm thinking, okay, I have to do this. 
okay, I'm going to do it on Instagram because my audience is not as big on Instagram than it is on Facebook. And so I tried to shift myself to try to balance off each other. So what I did is I looked around my office and if you guys can see, that's my store. That's my, literally my store every day. And I grabbed a box of booze because that is, to me is one of my strongest things that I not only take every single day, I have my family drinking boost every single day because of all the great things that that's in it. Cause you can drink cold. You can add it with glass. You can add it with the strawberry shake. You can add to almond milk. You can um, drink it hot, which I love to do. So I went on Instagram and I did my live and I did it on boost and it was, we were running the promotion of buy one, get one promotion. And guess what? When I got done doing that live, I immediately got a hit, immediately got a hit and a customer, I got a brand new customer out of it and she bought two. So you just never know. You have to step outside your comfort zone and just do it. And you have to learn to bounce. Like today, what I'm doing right now, I'm bouncing because I didn't think I was going to be able to do this in literally uh, an hour's notice, but I'm doing it and I'm hope I'm doing okay. And, um, so just regardless of everybody else, they look so professional when they're doing their lives or their reels, or whatever it is they're doing, guess what? People want to see you. I have people that, are, that um, follow up with me a year later that didn't even, aren't even interest, weren't even interested at the beginning. And I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, I got to do my, my one, two, three steps. What am I going to do today? Mm, okay. Well, I'm nervous to do my life. I mean, literally this is, we can get caught up in our brains, but unless you are consistent in doing it. A year later, someone may buy from you because you were consistent, because you did do it, because you step outside your comfort zone. Um, and it's hard. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's hard. I mean, you guys are going to laugh on this one. But when I was in high school, I used to be, I used to like stutter a lot when I was around a group of people. And I did not think of myself at all as a salesperson at all. It was my first time I went into, I worked at a men's close from my girlfriend, you know, con me into doing it. And I had to approach men. This is when IOU and Zcab reaches were popular. You got you guys, some of you guys are a little too young for that, but there was a trend, merry-go-round DJs. They were the very popular hit, hit thing. This is like 88 time frame. So, so I would have to go up to these really cute young guys and try to sell them, you know, all this really cool stuff. And until I did that and I practiced it every single day, I was, I was a mess until I became, it became secondhand to me. And just like when you do your lives, the more you do it, the more you do your reels, the more you have conversation with your clients and follow up with them, you're going to get better at it. You're going to be able to know how to shift. Everybody's different. So you're going to have to learn how to do that. And you're not going to learn how to do it if you stay in your box at home, in your bedroom, not doing it and just contemplating it more than what you need to be doing. You just have to do. You just have to do. And then you have to think about, um, let's see, I'm going off the list here. When you are also doing your lives, your reels, and anything you're doing on social media, because a lot of our business is involved in social media, are you going into your website on your um, cloud office and are you checking your website traffic? Because if you got like 79 people hitting you up that day, you need to find out why. This is part of the marketing thing. You have to do research and find out when you really were hot, when you were cold, how can you tweak it, what you need to do. What did you do that day? What, what, what was gave people the urgency to, to get on your website and try to duplicate that. And then if there was something that didn't work, just tweak it up a little bit. It's, you're not a failure. I, that's the least thing that could happen. This is all going to be trial and error of what's good, what you're going to be comfortable with and what you're not going to be comfortable with, but you cut yourself some slack. Okay. Remember that. Um, when you are getting objections, like I would have customers come in to me in, in, in my store. It used to be called, it was called hit or miss and they would come in. I'm here to return $500 with the clothes, boom. And you're just looking at this person like, oh my gosh, this is going to go against my UPT sales. Units per transaction is going to go over my, the, the $5,000 that I need to have that day. So I'm thinking in my head, okay, what can I do to talk her out of, you know, shifting it around? So then I would try to say, well, what, what was it about these things? What happened to them? And then she started engaging into why something wasn't fitting right. Well, guess what? I have a, something else that may work for you that's very similar. This is important because this is why it's important to know your product, because sometimes what might not work for somebody may work the best for somebody else. Know your product and know how to shift. Listen to what people are saying. So when you look at objection, um, when someone comes in and says, no, I don't want this, don't look at that as something bad. Look at that. It's going to help you grow and how to be able to solve a problem. Okay. Be creative. 
don't you don't have to do it like how Sid does it or Haas does it or Julie does it or Jess does it or Mary does it. Be creative about how you you're kind of selling yourself. Just be calm, collective, and be creative. Um, let's see how much time. Oh my gosh, I'm going so fast, and I, all my topics are kind of running out here. And then the next thing that I find is really helpful is, and this is what what Jess says, and Sydney says, and Ha says, books, self development, events, podcasts. So last year, uh, right around the time that Thrive Palooza came around, and I, I, you know, again, I shared this story before, and some of you guys have heard it, some of you guys have not. And I was honestly, I had a lot of objections going on at that time, not only with the whole C were going around, um, I was getting a lot of family stuff was going around, people were dropping off like flies, and it was getting to and people were complaining upline downline and, and not specifically anybody here was just, you know, they're obviously not with the business anymore. But I started to feel like, oh my gosh, this is just I want to throw in the towel. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go to Thrive Palooza. I'm going to go. I, I paid a ticket for my daughter to go with me because I didn't want to go by myself. And I decided to go. And one person showed up from our, our hustle, um, hustle and Grow team. And that person I locked arms with and learned so much. And it became where I was going to throw in the towel. It motivated me because everything that went on there, it went from just learning from her, from learning from the speakers, Gary John Bishop was freaking fantastic. And every time that I go, every time that there's Thrive Palooza or another event or another um, Zoom with leaders, it's always good to listen because you're only going to learn what you know at that moment for the person that you're listening to. It's always good to get a variety. That means not only a variety of that, I, that um, uh, podcast, that book, that event, everybody has a piece. And it's really important to listen to everybody because something's going to stick. This little tool from this person, that skill set is going to stick to you. That one's going to stick to you. That's going to stick to you. Some things may not work. I had a guy who gave me a book, a self-help book, and I read it. And I literally, after chapter two, I'm like, this is not for me. This is not for me. Um, so I still read the entire book, but I took out the pieces that I thought were going to be beneficial to my growth. And that's something that you guys have to realize. It's really important. You're only as good as what information you're taking in. So rather be books, rather be events or pod, um, podcasts, um, it's really important to self-develop. And it's really important to do this on a daily basis. Now, for me personally, I have, I'm kind of one of those really kind of freaky people. Like I don't read a whole book all at once. I dabble. I'm a dabbler. I don't know if that's good or bad. But I dabble with, I, I, every single day I read the Bible, okay? I read something that is spiritually motivating. I'll read something from either Eric Rohr or um, uh, Tom Hopkins or Mammy McCall. I mean, and Jess and Sydney and all, and our leaders have so many great ideas. Like she's got some books that she's going to have at the mastermind that's going to, I'm really excited about pouring myself into. And it's just training. It's training. It, it, you have to look at this as a way to grow. And here's a, here's a mindset that's really awesome. If you were going to college, okay, you're going to go to classes. And those <laughs> classes are, uh-oh, I think I heard somebody. Sorry. <laughs> those classes are going to give you books, lots of books, lots of books to read. So why would you not do for your own business? If you are, if you're into this and you want to grow your business, why would you not have your own books? Why would you not have your own growth? You're an entrepreneur. You are a manager. You have assistant managers called your downline. You have your upline, which is what I would call back in the day, your district manager, and then your regional manager, and then the vice president and the president. And um, you have to understand that you need these, you need these people top and bottom to grow yourself. Okay. So don't, that's another thing. A lot of people have a huge objections that they find out that people kind of get on them about this being a, um, what is that? Multi-line scam pyramid, pyramid schmearing it. It's not, it literally, listen, <laughs> you go to Ford motor, they're going to have an owner, right? Ford motor. He's in Henry Ford, the owner is, doesn't he have a bunch of sons that run the business and don't they have a bunch of presidents and their divisions run the business. And then they have, CEOs that manage the financial pieces of it and H human resources who handle the people themselves and um, marketing who handles the marketing of Ford. 
I mean, you have to remember this business is the best of every single multi-level comp multi -level company I have ever been part of. And I, I seriously mean this from the bottom of my heart, not only because I'm not getting emotional, because it really is. I mean, to have the tools, to have the back office that we have that is freaking insane awesome and the tools that you're going to get from it, to having the marketing PDFs. And let me tell you, that is sick. I hope you guys are utilizing those PDFs, like, like unbelievable. So I have customers who will say, I'm allergic to something. All I do, oh, you are. Okay, let me check it out. I'll go in my back office. I might send their phone, Wi-Fi, anywhere, any place. And I'll look up. Okay, let's see. They want to know what's in the vitamins. I pull up the vitamins. And I have this nice little uh, share button down the bottom. And while I'm talking to them on the phone, guess what? Ding! They get the PDF of the product. They get to see what's in it. They can say, oh, you know what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to close that deal. The longer you guys wait on getting customers information, the colder their feet are going to get and the closer that they're going to be from saying no or taking longer. Okay. So just make sure that you guys are utilizing the tools in the back office. Um, it's great. I mean, I could go on for literally hours about how to do this business and in, in ways. I'm not perfect. I'm not a 200K yet, but you know what? I'm going to be there, whether it be six months from now, whether it be a year from now, whether it be two years from now. I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. I still get my auto bonus every single month and I will not take no for an answer. And if I, if someone does not want the business right now, or someone does not want my products right now, guess what? I move on to the next person. I don't worry about it. I don't stress out. Even if every single one of my customers fall off, if I'm doing my job, if I'm doing the IPAs, it shouldn't matter because I'm creating new, I'm engaging and creating a new. So that's all I really have. I hope I didn't go too fast. Um, that's it. That's all I have. So I hope you guys have a good night. Do, does anybody have any questions on anything I said? Because I'd be happy. Let me move my chat. Things. Oh, I got five chat things going on here. Hold on a second, guys. Let's see if you guys have questions. Let's see here. Pyramid Shmoo. <laughs> Is that hilarious that people think like, think like that? Sorry, my God. Okay, that's okay, Ashley. Uh, lots of experience doing them. Yes, yes, yes. When I worked in retail, we had to figure out eight. I had to figure out eights around the store and talk to anyone you saw. It was wrong. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you, if you ever, 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 ever have to do what? Eight, you had to do figure eights? <laughs> that's, oh my gosh. I remember we had to do that. Yes. Oh, because you know, number one, you did figure eights because you didn't want people to steal from you. You had to do figure eights to make sure everybody sees that you're present. And that's another tool. Hey, that's an awesome tool, Sydney. Yes. Oh my sorry, guys. Um doing getting like this with people, it's important. How are you doing your figure? I mean, that's a whole nother topic in itself. Are you figuring eight your day? Are you getting in front, get behind the part of it? to do your growth and then getting in front of it, to be aggressive, to be in front of the people. That's a really, really good analogy. Said I love that. It is, it is hard at first, but the more you guys do this business and the more that you do the things that we, the tools that uh, SIP provides and Just provides and Haas provides and Julie provides and, and everybody and Jojo. And I mean, we're all, you know, our chats are amazing because we all, we fall on each other and that's what the great teamwork, the team hustle is all about. And, um, don't ever think that you fail if things are hap not happening. Just keep going. The Nike commercial, just do it. Put that in your head. Just do it. Get out of your nose. Don't quit. Don't quit. Okay, so keep going. So that's all I have for you guys. You guys are amazing. Sydney, I think you just did an Instagram so super fast. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so you guys have a good night. Um, I don't see any questions on here. So I making sure all right i quit lol no you don't <laughs> no, you guys I have a good night job. i gotta finish you what i quit my job after they made me do figure eights so that's oh what i'm doing because i wasn't oh yeah it. yeah yeah <laughs> not to mention do retail is hard on your back oh man I have, a I have a bad back from that but i have to go pack i have a, an amazing flight tomorrow heading out to florida to go see the rest of our team to learn and uh, grow and I, I hope you guys really take this to heart 
I hope you guys really understand it's important for you guys to do some of these things. I know it's not convenient. I mean, heck, I am missing my son's basketball games this weekend, a birthday parties, this, that. And you know what? I have to do it to self-develop myself. I have to do it to grow my team. I want my team to exceed. And I can, they're only going to be as good as what I'm going to do. So keep that you know, in mind. And I hope you guys have a fantastic evening. Be safe out there. Peace out.